Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike and you're watching Triple T Acres. And in today's video, I'm so excited. We have a lane shark on my tractor. And in this video, we are going to go over a lot of details, the specs, how it's hooked up to the tractor, the types of tractors that you can use this with, and the multiple different variations that you can put this thing in. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you're gonna wanna stick around, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, guys, this is the Lane Shark, and the model that I have in front of me is the LS3. And I've been lucky enough to be able to get this thing provided for me from my local dealer. So I'm not getting paid by Lane Shark to talk about any of this. This is just completely informative, and I'm thankful for Foltz Ag Equipment in Lancaster, Ohio. They're the ones that provided me for this to make this video so that you guys can be informed if this is something you might be interested in. And if it is, I have a link down in the description and have all of the information with full to ag equipment in Lancaster, Ohio. So if you're living anywhere around the area, they are the largest LS tractor dealer in its region. They've won many awards for customer service. I just think they're a great company. I've dealt with them many, many times. And again, I'm so thankful that they were able to provide this for me. So if you guys wanna buy one of these things after you watch everything in this video, check down in the description and give them a shot. All right, guys, this is the Lane Shark. So the LS3 is one of three models that they have. This is for the smaller compact tractor. Now my tractor, I wouldn't consider small. Small meaning it needs to be at least 2,000 pounds. And I have the LS XR3135 and it's well over 2,000 pounds. So no issue with this tractor running it. Their LS4 model is for the little bit larger tractor. It has a little bit wider cutting diameter, it's a little bit heavier. And then they even have an option for a higher flow motor on theirs that'll run about 15 to 20 gallons per minute where this one is actually five to eight and a half gallons per minute which is what makes this thing so unique you can run it on the front of a tractor that has low flow and this thing does a really really good job so if you look underneath the deck here you have a normal rotary cutter design you have some swinging blades here and it actually has a cutting edge on both sides of that really really sharp and if you see here this blade will go out in front of the deck and what makes that really, really cool is when you have branches that are hanging over, it actually clips them first, cuts them up, and throws them in front of it and actually downwards, the way the blades spin. So really, really cool there. Um, I've never had anything come back and hit me while I was using this thing. I'm not saying that it can happen, but I have not seen anything come back. So the specs say that it can actually cut up to a three inch diameter branch. And I've actually, I probably cut some bigger ones than that really. The position that it's in right now is the 90 degree position or the vertical position. And I'll attach some footage here of me using it, going down this fence row that had a lot of branches and everything hanging over and it did a really, really good job with that. I had so many branches hanging over, cutting into me when we were on the four wheeler and when we were walking and it did a wonderful job cutting those things back. Other reasons you would put this in this position is, you know, you got a bike path or a walking path or trails or anything that you have these branches hanging over. That's what's really, really nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this thing up here in a little bit. We're going to turn the motor on. I'm going to let you see the blades go. And I'm going to measure how high this thing gets because there's even been positions where I was reaching really, really high up for branches that were hanging over. So if maybe you have a larger piece of equipment that needs to come through there, you can actually cut really, really high and create those openings. All right, so let's go over some of these connections and what you might need for your tractor for something like this to work. So you need a minimum of five to eight 0.5 gallons per minute rate from your tractor. And you have to look at some of your tractor specs to make sure that you have that. You need to have a skid steer mount or a John Deere mount so it can connect to that. Now you cannot connect this to any skid steer because the flow is much too high on that. In order for you to run this on your tractor, you need to have something called a third function kit. And Lane Shark on their website will show you that they want you to have something called a C-Flow kit. And what you'll see right here is two buttons. And this would typically come with just a standard third function is these intermittent buttons. And what that would do was open and close a grapple. That's typically what people will install a third function for. Well, what you need is this continuous flow. And let me get around the tractor and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now this button right here is the continuous flow. Now, Lane Shark's WR Long Kit might be a little bit different than this. They may have actual a totally different setup of maybe another button, but the same concept is you press that button and it holds that valve open. And that valve is not a mechanical valve. It is actually an electronic valve that is powered with a 12 volt system. As you see, when you install these, they are going to change out the handle 
and it is going to have some 12 volt cables that'll connect to the battery and actually come back down to here to your WR long third function kit. Now there's two different kinds of third functions out there. There's a diverter valve, which is not actually a third function. And then this, this is an actual third function. The diverter valve will actually divert the curl function of your tractor and allow the flow to go out that way. Now you don't want that because what's really important is you need to be able to have that curl function and is what makes these things really unique is you're able to move them up and down and curl them back and forth to cut in certain areas. So what I would recommend is getting on their website, contacting Lane Shark, and they will direct you to the correct third function kit, C-Flow kit that is for your tractor. While we're on the subject of hydraulics, I do wanna make note of this. Your tractor might have rear remotes and you may want to connect lines to these rear remotes and run them up to your tractor and that will work if you have the correct flow right it will work but the problem is some tractors will prioritize the flow from your rear remotes away from your loader so when it is running a lot of flow through those rear remotes it won't allow enough flow to lift your arms and curl well that's really really important when you're running a lane shark is you got to be able to lift those things up and down so that you can cut appropriately. What happens with the third function, especially WR Long's third function, is they prioritize the loader above the cutter. Now, what ends up happening is when you are running the cutter, the hydraulic flow is continually flowing through those lines. And what will happen is you'll lift your arms up to change the position of cutting and it will steal the flow from the blades. Now that's not that big of a deal because as soon as you come off lifting or curling, it'll return the flow fully back on your blades and it catches right back up to the speed that you need. I haven't had any issues with that, but what you'll see, and I'm gonna show you in a future video, some really good tips on how to run these. You don't run the arms up and down. You wanna stay kind of in, in one height and cut along the edge before you change that position because you don't wanna constantly take flow from those blades. And that'll all make sense later. So keep an eye out for those videos coming out here in the future. So again, we'll keep on the subject of hydraulics. On these front lines, this is really, really important. So if you get a lane shark, you have got to have this in place. This is a check valve right here. And how that works is you'll run your hydraulics and when you let off of the button or turn the continuous flow button off, it shuts a valve. And what happens is these blades have a lot of momentum when they're spinning and they need to continue to slow down. And if you shut that valve and you do not have the check valve in place, those things slam shut and you can either damage the motor on here or your tractor and you definitely don't wanna do that. What this does is once that pressure is built up here, this valve will open up and will continue a circle and it will close the circle and the blades will slow down on their own. That is very, very critical. So make sure that you have this in place and make sure it's flowing in the right direction. All right, so that's the hydraulic setup and what it looks like. Let's get this thing up in the air. I'm gonna measure how high that you can actually cut this thing and we'll actually turn the motor on and let you see those blades spin. All right, let's get this thing lifted up in the air. Give you an idea how high you can actually cut with this thing, which is super cool. So right there, now I can still curl up and down. All right, let's get a tape measure and let me show you how high this thing actually is up off the ground. All right, as you can see, that is really, really high. And I'm about 5'10", and I'm fully reached up here and I'm getting the bottom of that. So you're actually cutting all the way up there. So if I run a tape measure all the way up here, let's just get to the top of the box so I can hook it on something. All right, that is measuring 10 feet. So I'm 10 feet up off the ground and it's going to cut everything that's out in front of it. So any, any sticks that are gonna come inside this area right here is gonna get cut. So 10 feet high, that's pretty nice. And I'll attach some footage here right now of me actually cutting really high up into a tree. And man, it was super, super impressive. All right, so let's get on the tractor. I'm gonna fire the thing up and let you see these blades spin. I might even put it in slow motion so you can kind of see how this will work. Get a little bit of throttle here. This is the continuous flow button. We'll press that and engage. All right, as you can see, the blade's engaged and with that button, it's gonna hold open. I don't have to sit here and hold the button the whole entire time. And those blades are actually spinning really, really fast. I think the camera frame rate really makes it look slow, but those things are moving right now. 
So I'm gonna press the button and let the thing slow down. And this is where that check valve in the front is really, really important. Because normally if that check valve wasn't there, when I press that button, that thing would slam shut. And what that does is it allows those blades to slow down with all that momentum on their own so it doesn't cause any damage to anything like that in the track. Let's get the camera turned around here and I'm gonna show you all the positions that this thing can go in and some of the applications that you might wanna use it in. All right, to change positions, you need to lift your loader up and dump it. All right, so you get it in this position and this kind of takes the weight off of some of those hinges and angles. What we need to do now is we need to actually remove the couple pins on here. Let me get the camera turned around and let me show you what I'm talking about. So this gets held in the 90 degree position or the vertical position with this right here. I'm gonna remove this pin right here. And what that will allow it to do is pivot all the way back open here. So I've got that pin removed and you can swing this arm back over here to get it out of the road. And anytime you take one of these pins out, you wanna put the pin back in its position so you don't lose them. I mean, you know how tractor pins are. Another pin we gotta remove back here. And what that does is now it will lock it in what they call the offset position. Put this pin back in, we'll hold it. Now this thing is considered in the offset position. Let me turn the tractor on and turn it up and you'll see what I'm talking about. So now obviously these hoses are in a horrible position. What you do is you move them up and out of the road. Those magnets will hold those hose lines. Now we are outside the tractor. Let me take a measurement on here and measure how far outside the wheelbase we might be here. So I would say the wheels are outside the loader arm. Uh, we'll say six inches. It's marking eight inches. So this rotary cutter is actually about two inches outside this wheel right here, maybe a little less in the back. Now, what would you use this for? I actually used it to mow the side of my pond. It wasn't super practical for me and I'll attach some footage right here. My pond edges are a little bit steep and you don't want your tractor to be kind of leaning very much. But if you had a nice flat edge, you can get this thing and run the edge of your pond and or a bank or something like that and cut that just like this. Super practical and for those things right there. Now, again, that vertical angle is where this thing shines, but it's really nice that you have some other options to put it in. Now let's get this thing moved over to the front position. Now, before I move out of this position, I like to remove the hydraulic lines because this thing is gonna start swinging in and out of here. Let's connect them, okay? So we've got our hoses disconnected. Now we gotta remove a couple pins here. Spin it all the way around. It almost likes it's gonna be upside down. And you'll see that's why I wanted to disconnect those hydraulic lines. And a good place to put these when you're not using them is up here. Now I've got another pin up here I gotta show you, which is right here. You're gonna remove this cotter pin. And what that allows is you to reach underneath here and pull this down. What that does, you pull that down and then it allows that to swivel around. Let me show you that. You need to pull it to the front. Lift up a little bit on it. All right, now we're in the front position. Now this other pin you got here will actually lock in place right here. And this is what will keep it from swinging down. There, now we're locked in place. So here it is in the front position. It is a little bit more difficult to get it into that position compared to the others. So once you get it out, it's a lot easier to go to the offset to 90 degrees a lot more. But this is likely the least position that you're gonna be using this thing in uh, because you don't use this thing to mow. You, you use a rotary cutter or a finish mower to mow. This is more likely to be used to clear brush and things like that. Don't underestimate this thing. This thing can actually do a lot of work. It can cut some really thick material. If you thought that that was too much or too difficult to move in those positions, as you own one of these things, you're gonna get better and better at moving them out of those positions. Lane Shark actually has something called the Hammerhead. They've created a hydraulic system that can move out and move up. You don't even have to leave your seat and you can change the positions and it seems pretty infinite. 
Super, super cool. You're gonna pay a little bit more for one of those. And maybe I'll attach some footage here of that thing in use, or I'll add a link down in the description of a video where the hammerhead is actually being used. But super, super cool. I'm excited to see that. Hopefully I can eventually get my hands on one of those things and I'll give you guys a full rundown on how that thing works. Well, that is the lane shark and all the positions that you can put it in and some scenarios that you might use it in. We also went over the hydraulic system that you need to have in place if you wanna run something like this. But guys, if you like this kind of content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, but until next time, we'll see you in the next video.